Hey, I'm Jason Lucas, and today we're going to be working on this Eden Nook. I've got a ceiling and some walls to take care of. On the walls, we're going to be doing a multi-layer distress plaster finish. And then on the ceiling, I've got kind of a just a round turret ceiling with a slight pitch. And the first thing we're going to do is take some flex molding and install like a crown around the perimeter, a new medallion in the center, and then some mock-up beams that we're just going to build out of flex molding and do a cool plaster finish over. Once we get that done, we can do some distressed plaster finishing inside the insets, and we're going to do some Modelo stuff, and it'll be really cool. Going to change the effect quite a bit. Okay, for the center medallion, we're just using one of these composite ones. You can pick these up at like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, anything like that. So we're just going to drop this in the center first. For the perimeter, we've just got a real basic crown mold. This is actually isn't even a crown mold, it's a baseboard, but we're gonna flip it upside down so I got this big fat lip on top. That's what my beams will run into. But uh, you know, this stuff's extremely flexible so it's good for the perimeter because you got the big curve. And then for our beams, this is just gonna be flat. Uh, it'll look a lot more interesting when we're done because we're gonna do a plaster treatment over it, make it look like actual wood and do some stenciling. But again, you know, this is just real flexible vinyl stuff. so. Go ahead and start doing some cuts and laying this up. This really isn't for every decorative painter. You might want to have a carpenter do this part for you. So we'll set this up and then we'll get on to the decorative painting part. Okay, for the first step in this finish, on both the ceiling insets and on the walls, we're going to apply a coat of Faux Effect Sandstone and we're going to water that down 20% and then we're going to apply it with a roller and chip brush just to get us a good scratch coat to work over. Okay, so first thing I'll do is just cut in as if I was actually painting. And so I've just got it on a small chip brush, my sandstone, and I'm just going to go and brush in my perimeter. Okay, so now that I've got an area cut in, I'm just going to go and we'll roll it on in like kind of a linear fashion. And you just want to do 100% coverage. This is going to help our next step when we're actually doing some plaster work. Give us a little bit more of an organic random trowel finish. So just nice full coverage, starting in random different places. It's kind of thick and thin going in and out. So just do that to the entire surface. Okay, so now my sandstone is dry, so I've applied two coats of it, and it's like a really rough aggregate, because sandstone does have like some aggregate in it, and that's what's gonna help create a random trowel on our next layer. But the first thing I wanna do is just take a trowel and knock some of that down by just running it over the surface, over my entire surface. Okay, for the next step in this finish, all we're gonna do is take some water-based crackle size and a chip brush, and I'm just gonna randomly brush this over, let's say like 30% of the surface. So it just doesn't need to be real thick. You can vary the thickness. And just don't give it a lot of thought. Just kind of fly over your surface. And then we're gonna let that set up for about one hour and then we can get on to our next step. Okay, now that I've got my surface covered 30% with size and I've let it set for about an hour, I'm ready to start applying my next step, which is gonna be a plaster called Grossesa XT by Perfetto. And what this stuff does is uh, it goes on really nice, very easy to trowel, but then it fractures on its own. And it gives us this nice little porcelain fracture, just creates a lot of interest in the texture. And anywhere we put size, it's gonna fracture even bigger. If we put size on thick enough, it's actually gonna fall off the wall. So it gives us this really organic look. And the reason we're doing this in the process right now is what we're doing is we're creating the background kind of uh, texture look for our next plaster step where it's going to break away and it's going to expose this. So the idea is that this is like an old, old uh, castle or an old building that's not built out of drywall, but there's actually like stonework behind here and that's what's being exposed when it's falling apart. So that's why we're doing these layers in this order right now. So I'm gonna get this set up with a hawk and trowel and then we'll start troweling it over the entire surface. Okay, so I've got my hawk loaded and I'm just gonna take a steel trowel. And as you can see, this stuff, it's kind of the consistency of like almost like a drywall mud. So it's really easy to work with. I'm just gonna load up my trowel and then uh, go ahead and just start laying it in over the surface. Now with this sandstone texture behind there, as I'm troweling this on, I'm not trying to do like a smooth, beautiful trowel job because this is organic and destroyed. Um, 
what the aggregate in that sandstone before is going to do as I'm laying it on is it's going to cause all this pitting and randomness in the troweling. And that's exactly what we want. It's just going to add a lot more interest. And these holes will give us a really nice effect. And keep in mind too, like when I'm troweling on the Grosseza, it's not a totally skim coat everywhere. I'm going to go in and out and have thicker and thinner areas. Anywhere I put this on thicker, it's going to fracture bigger. In the thinner spots, real thin, it might not fracture at all. But then in mid-thin, it's going to give us this nice little porcelain fracture. So when we stain it, it's really going to enhance all that. Okay, so when I'm troweling this, I'm right-handed, so I have the right side of my trowel loaded. I don't use the left, always the right. And if you're left-handed, of course, you use the left-hand side. And when I'm skimming it on in this method, um, if I raise the blade like this, then I'm putting a lot of pressure right on that very end of that steel edge, and I'm going to skim most of my material off. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is load it, and I'm going to lower the blade so that this outside edge is closer to the wall, and that means more surface area of my trowel is going to cover the surface of the wall so it's going to be less pressure and it's going to go on thicker. Okay so the grosses is dried overnight and as you can see we have this random fracturing goes in and out and we have some pits and voids so the next thing we need to do is just take some 220 grit sandpaper and give the entire surface just a light sand just to knock down any of the sharp pieces or anything that was going to fall off anyway. Okay, so you're up on the scaffolding with me now. So once again, these ceiling insert panels have had the same process so far. The Grosses XT over sandstone, and then we've given them a light sand. So now what we need to do is stain these with, we're gonna use kind of an earth brown glaze. This is gonna be meant to represent kind of the background plaster when we do the next steps and as pieces of it broken away, this is what'll be exposed, okay? So this, that's what we're creating right now. And to do that, what I've got is I've got 20 ounces of golden full-bodied glazing medium and eight tablespoons of earth brown aqua color. And then the other things I'm gonna need are, I'm gonna put that in a weenie roller tray with a 3 8 inch nap roller. I wanna have some chip brushes, a large bristle brush to push this glaze around the surface, some shop towels. And then my last two pieces are I've got a squirt bottle with water that I'm going to mist the wall with first to help me push my glaze around. And then I've got some isopropyl alcohol in this one that's going to create this kind of like embedded glaze look. So we'll get started and you'll kind of get the gist of it. Thank you. 